the Latin American economies have been through a period of reasonably high growth historically, and many people have argued that the strength of Latin America, current strength of Latin American economies can be seen by the fact that they managed to survive the very, very deep financial crisis in developed countries without following those developed countries into recession. Now, there's one difficulty with this argument, and that difficulty is that for most Latin American developing countries, they are now facing a different set of consequences from those financial crises. For example, you did not have substantial bank failures in Latin America, in difference from the 1970s or the 1980s. You had those failures in the developed economies. But as a result of the policies that developed countries have put into place, that is putting interest rates down to zero or near zero, and using very strong monetary stimulus, and at the same time attempting to cut back on fiscal expenditures to reduce outstanding debt to GDP ratios, there will be a second wave of the crisis which will hit Latin American economies. The first part will be the very sharp increase in capital inflows as a result of re-establishing very large interest rate differentials between interest rates paid in developed and those paid in developing countries. These interest rate changes will generate large capital flows which will have an impact on exchange rates so that Latin American countries will again go through a period of exchange rate appreciation which will probably be very similar to what we experienced in the 1990s but more importantly to what was experienced before the crisis of the 1980s. On the other hand, the reduction in fiscal expenditures in the developed countries will bring about a decline in world trade, will also bring about a decline in global demand, which means that the exports of developing countries, particularly in manufacturers, will be penalized. They're already being penalized by the appreciation of exchange rates. So they'll be meeting less or more difficult competitive conditions and lower demand conditions. At the same time, it's likely that the international commodity price boom that had reversed for a time the decline in the terms of trade and produced very large increases in terms of trades for Latin American developing countries will also be reversed. So that while Latin American countries had possibly escaped the worst implications of the financial market crisis, the measures that have been taken, the policy measures that have been taken in developed countries will bring about a challenge to Latin American countries which will be just as large as the financial crisis initially. The interesting part of the challenge which is currently facing Latin American countries as a result of these policies taken in developed countries is that in a sense it puts them or pushes them back to the kinds of conditions that Raul Prebisch and other structuralist economies were trying to remedy when they first proposed the new approach to development strategies. In particular, if we look at the impact of these measures on the manufacturing sector and on the primary commodity sector, we find that they will have a very different type of impact. And that impact, if we take it into account, turns out to be, in general, detrimental to growth projects. Now, one of the basic points that the structuralist economies, economists were attempting to point out was that aggregate measures, aggregate measures in the sense of simply using simple exchange rates or simple monetary policy, will have differential impacts depending on the productive structure of the economy. So it is extremely important when we look at these measures to analyze the response of different sectors in the economy and the effect of these changes in producing structural changes and the impact that will have on the growth in real incomes.